What's up guys, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog, and today I'm going to tell you the top five reasons that corals die, and at the end of the video I'll run through a further five common causes. Now if you're new to the channel, I put out a video every Friday at 4pm UK time with tips on how to set up and maintain an awesome reef tank. So if that's your goal, have a think about subscribing. Right, let's take a look. Number five is improper acclimation. While travel might broaden the mind for us hobbyists, it's just plain stressful for corals. That's particularly the case with ship corals, but even a short journey from your local fish shop is no fun for these guys. There's no need to drip acclimate, but you should always rest new corals in your tank for half an hour or so before you take them out of their bag so the temperature is equalized. Then let them sit on a frag rack at the bottom of your tank for a couple of weeks before gently moving them up to their final resting place so they don't bleach out from too much light. Next up is warfare. This is particularly the case with LPS corals, but it applies to all types of coral. Even SPS will battle it out for prime real estate. But the worst culprits are things like Euphilia and Goniopora, which have long sweeper tentacles they send out to wreak havoc. But this should be the easiest problem to avoid because it's completely within your control. All you need to do is a few minutes of research on whether a new coral will sting its neighbours, then place it accordingly. Next up is a really nasty one, metals in your water from faulty equipment. And this is nasty because nothing will show up on your home test kits and if left unchecked, it will slowly wipe out everything in your tank. So if everything in your tank is suffering, but your parameters look fine, it's a great idea to send off an ICP test, which will show up any metals in your tank. But you don't necessarily need an ICP test. If lots of your corals are dying, just strip back all of your pumps and check for damage. Number two is bad RO water, and this is something I bang on about all the time. But for good reason, bad RO water can have anything in it from silica that will cause diatoms to phosphate to poisonous metals like copper. So check your RO source to see what the TDS is and make sure the answer is zero. If you buy it from your local fish shop, ask them if they sell RO filters and start making your own water. Having control over the quality of the water you produce is the easiest route to success in the hobby and it'll even save you money over time. And before I get to the five bonuses, the number one on my list is alkalinity swings, particularly with stony corals. If your SPS corals are stripping, there's a good chance it's a problem with your alkalinity. So long as the number is between 7 and 11 dKH, the number itself doesn't really matter, but stability is essential. So you need to monitor it regularly to avoid swings. You should really test out at the very least once a week. If you only test when there's a problem, you won't know what level it's been running at. So you'll test when there is a problem, see it's 8 dKH and think there's nothing wrong. When the truth might be that it was 10 dKH two days ago and the sudden drop is what's caused all your problems. So those are the top five causes, but what about other common causes? Well, swings in anything like temperature, salinity, or any other parameters is right up there. Corals thrive on stability, so you don't need to go chasing numbers, but you do need to make sure they stay roughly the same. Next up is being eaten by either pests or fish. If you've got a known coral muncher like an angelfish or a butterfly fish, or even some types of blenny in your tank, that might be why your acans have disappeared. And if you're seeing corals of one species like Montipora or Aquapora all disappearing, you might have some kind of pest on them. Then there is tinkering. As I mentioned a hundred times already, corals love stability, but us hobbyists love to tinker. So changing anything like your lights, your new salt mix, or even changing Roafoss, can have a negative effect on your corals. Then there are notoriously difficult corals. So if you keep something like an ice fire echinata or even just a normal SPS coral when your tank isn't ready, you might cause yourself problems. So when a coral is described as expert only, heed that advice and steer clear. Then there is water volume. Now this isn't a cause as such, but the smaller your tank is, the harder it is to maintain stable parameters and the more likely you are to have big swings. And finally there is, well, just because. You can go through this entire list spend hours researching and still come up blank. And while there usually will be an explanation, at the end of the day, corals are sensitive animals, so you might just be unlucky. If you enjoyed that then, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next Friday's video. And until next time, happy reefing.